Hello, it's Darren at Moonhair Studio, and today I've got a short cue that I've composed entirely in Ethera Gold 2.5. I hope this will showcase the sheer power and versatility of that library, but also I've got an ulterior motive because this weekend is the release of Ethera Sahara Voices, and I'm going to see how I can incorporate that library into this cue. So first off, let's just have a listen to the cue, then I'll break it down and I'll go through the instruments and how I've used them, including some of the ones that I've programmed myself. And then in video two, which is the one I'm really looking forward to, we'll bring in Sahara voices and we'll let Clara Sirachi's voice really lift this piece to the next level. But first off, let's have a listen to what I've composed. <laughs> So I hope you can hear how versatile this library is. I mean, I haven't even used the, the vocals at all. So uh, let's just take a quick look. It starts off with this uh, mandolin type riff, Let me solo that up. And that I've programmed in using the core synth. So this is kind of a, a workhorse for the um, Ethera Gold. Uh, you can layer up to three different waveforms so i've layered a mandolin and a violin but you'll notice from the um the scoring here from the key roll that actually i'm not really doing much <laughs> i've literally step programmed that in that was that was very straightforward but you can hear it's it's giving this lovely little riff and then bring in the uh, octave as well and that's all done using the uh, step sequencer in in the instrument itself so i mean this is very versatile you've got an arpeggiator that allows you not only to create these rhythmic structures and then you can decide how many steps you want um, how you want that to sound you know you've got various ways of playing it so i've used chord here so that it plays all the notes that you're playing on those beats with those those volume levels but also you can change the notes and that's how i've got that da -da 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 riff going in i've actually changed the notes here um you know you just drag and drop basically it's just sort of drag them up and down um, to create you know whatever sequence you want now i've done something slightly different with the other track the other mandolin track so if we move up that um, this one i've actually played in 
so I've done that sort of, uh, you know, just straight off the keyboard. And you can see um, that I've just been messing around with it. But again, it's it's just creating this lovely sound. So we play the two together. And that, again, is because you've got that uh, wonderful um, arpeggiator, which allows you to do all sorts of stuff. And so I've created, again, a bit of a rhythm and then I put it in as played mode rather than chord mode to give that sort of, uh, I don't know, it's, it's creating all of those sorts of little rhythms and bits and pieces that I wouldn't necessarily think of straight off the bat. So, you know, lovely. So then we start to get a little bit of the uh, bass and the percussion coming in and that comes in uh, low underneath so let's just uh, solo those up and you can hear it's, it's just starting to come in and the way I've done that is I've actually programmed in some modulation with my mod wheel and that's actually controlling the instrument itself so if we have a quick look um, you'll notice that there's a there's a cut um, and resonance feature here on the EQ channel of each of those instruments. Um, so if that's out, then it's not working at all. You just turn it on and off from there. But it, it allows you to use the mod wheel to actually bring that instrument in gradually and, and give that filter sweep effect. And so I've done that on the bass, but I've also done it on the percussion as well. And you'll see um, I've got my modulation stored in there on the, on the percussion channel and if we bring up the instrument um, you'll see that exactly the same thing here I've got my my cut off and this sort of filter sweep as the as the percussion comes in now I've got to say I particularly enjoyed working with the percussion because originally when I thought I'd do this cue I was going to use Native Instruments West Africa to do the percussion because I really like that library but then I thought why not just delve into what we've got on offer here and there is a lot there's, there's a, a lot of different loops available so I used the action synth this time rather than the uh, core synth um, I programmed in a tribal loop and a trailer percussion so two different types of percussion but what really brought it to life for me was the again the use of the arpeggiator because not only can you get the rhythms that you want but you can also um, change the notes again so you're plucking different parts of the loop out and creating your own loops on the fly so as you play it you know depending on what note you're playing you're getting totally different loops and you can just muck around with it and and just get such a wide variety of different mixes and matches of the percussion so i really enjoyed that feature and again even though the actual piano roll doesn't look very complicated what you can then do is just to sort of nip in and out of different types of percussion sound depending on the notes you're doing and plucking different things from different loops um, and then you can start to build those up and make them slightly more complicated and then really go to town and, and really start to move things around so added to that original sweep percussion you've you've got that sort of lovely rhythm then and let's just um, solo that up again so you can hear that there and then I added in later on not only different types of percussion so you know we're, we're mo moving to different things going on it's a nice lot of variation here but we've also got these chimes coming in and you will have noticed that possibly on the run through that by hitting the chord on the chimes, which is quite a sort of, a, a, well, it's, it's a very trebly sort of sound, but then using the mod wheel again on that cutoff filter, you can create these swells on the fly, which is just, uh, you know, it's, it's just great. It's such an easy tool to use. And so I've used that all over the place. 
especially when I brought in the brass. So the brass, um, I found a lovely sort of Brahms. Uh, we'll bring that up. So I'm just trying to remember where it was. Yeah, in Ethera Gold. So we've got Brahms there, which is great. Great sounds. So coupled with the chimes. So let's uh, let's unsolo all of that. And let's just solo up the chimes and the Brahms. And, and you can just create this swell Brahm effect, which I think works really nicely. So let's just, here we go. And I've used that quite a bit in that final section. It just, it just really adds something, I think. And of course, added to all of the other effects that you get with these um, with these instruments, you can create all sorts of delays and bits and pieces. So, um, you know, we've got a great FX rack here. So a bit of reverb um, or you could put some delay on. Um, and again, you can see the the um, oh, I'm in I'm in the Brahms there. <laughs> that's that's just reverb for the Brahms. But if we look at the chimes, um, you can see that I've put a delay on there and that just gives us a, a nice sort of feel towards the end of each of those swells. But then the last things really are the strings and the pads. Um, and the string sound is, you know, very straightforward. Um, let's just have a, a look at that channel. Um, I'm just doing a very simple line. And once again, I've used the core synth and I've layered strings two and strings three together um, at an octave difference. So I've just used the tune function to detune and ask if that, you know, what you would do with a proper string library where you'd have maybe your violas and first violins are an octave apart or you know, violins and cellos. I mean, obviously, this is not meant to be an orchestral library, but you've got access to some of those elements that you can layer in and in the mix i mean they just they just sound great you know now i programmed my own patch for the pads the main pad i called this oxygen for obvious reasons because it is basically a filter sweep of you know sort of very jean-michel jarish um, and so if you have a listen to it, uh, let's let's solo up all the strings. Um, you'll hear that. I do love that sound. Oh, that takes me back to when I had a Jupiter six. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that was again quite nice because i had a chance just to go in and do some programming so it's very easy to drag different layers in you can see i've got different layers i don't think i used that one no the level's right down but but i could do because i i originally programmed it as a sort of heartbeat so so i've got that but i didn't need that for this particular um piece so i just took the level out um, so we've got strings, organics, um, going to the FX rack, and this is where we've got this phaser. So that's what I was using to create that deep phase effect and a bit of delay as well. So it does give that sort of sweep effect. Sounds so analog, doesn't it? Um, and I used that again as a bit of a an effect a sound effect right near the beginning so you can see i've got here just just playing octaves but then i'm using the mod wheel to sweep it in um i'm also detuning it so if we have a look at pitch bend i'm then detuning it down so if we if we just have a listen to this it just comes in over the top as an effect i 
almost like whale song and again because of the delay that i've actually got on the instrument it gives that lovely feedback so you you get that sort of whale song type of effect so if we just play that beginning section and i'll unsolo everything hear what hear how it comes in Just adds to that, I don't know, is it a desert feel? I don't know. You can imagine some sort of gin or something coming out of a bottle. Anyway, that's pretty much everything except for this one patch again, which I programmed in called Spooky. Um, and it was pretty much based on one of the presets. Um, let's just solo that one up. And you can hear it's a pad sound. Um, what was that one in? Yeah, again, that's in the core synth. Core synth I used a lot. And it's got this wonderful sort of violin effects and a guitar effect. So um, if you play those, it just gives this kind of weird offish effect. I mean, the, the violins are doing these weird sort of... Um, and it just creates a, a nice atmosphere and combined with the Brahms and the chimes and everything at the, at the end, it just, um, it just seemed to work, you know, sort of playing out. And again, bringing in that oxygen patch to bring a sort of whale song sound. Not that you have many whales in the desert, do you? <laughs> Anyway, that's pretty much what I did. Um, I'm going to now do another video at the weekend once Sahara Voices comes out and let's see how we can, you know, really bring this whole piece to life with the voice of Clara Sirachi. I can't wait. Uh, I hope I'll see you on that one. So take care. If you like the video, thumbs up and I'll see you at the weekend.